Now that we've seen why replication is important, let's do a quick dive into the details of replica sets. Replica sets are groups of MongoDBs that share copies of the same information between them. Replica set members can have one of two different roles. They either can be primary node, where all reads and all writes are served by this node, or secondary node, where the responsibility of these nodes is to replicate all of the information and is serve as a high availability node in case of failure of the primary. The secondaries will get the data from the primary through an asynchronous replication mechanism. Every time an application writes some data to the replica set, the write is handled by the primary node. And then data gets replicated to the secondary nodes. Now, this replication mechanism is based out of a protocol that manages the way that the secondaries should read data from the primary. In MongoDB, this asynchronous replication protocol may have different versions. We have PV1 and PV0. The different versions of the replication protocol will vary slightly on the way durability and availability will be enforced throughout the set. Currently, protocol version 1, or PV1, is the default version. This protocol is based out of the Raft protocol. If you are not familiar with the Raft protocol, in the lecture notes of this lesson, you will find detailed information about Raft. Just keep in mind for now that prior versions of MongoDB used the previous protocol version, PV0, and that there might be some configuration details in between both protocols. For now, we'll just focus on PV1. At the heart of this replication mechanism, there's our operations log, or oplog for short. The oplog is a statement-based log that keeps track of all write operations acknowledged by the replica set. Every time a write is successfully applied to the primary node, it will get recorded in the oplog in its idempotent form. We'll look into the idempotency details later, but keep in mind that an idempotent operation can be applied multiple times, and the end result of that operation will always result in the same end result. More on this up ahead. Apart from a primary or secondary role, a replica set member can also be configured as an arbiter. An arbiter is a member that holds no data. It is mere existence is to serve as a tiebreaker between secondaries in an election. And obviously, if it has no data, it can never become primary. Replica sets are failure resilient. That means that they have a failover mechanism that requires a majority of nodes in a replica set to be available for a primary to be elected. In this particular case, let's assume that we lose access to our primary. If we don't have a primary, we will not be able to write, and that's not good. So we need to clear between the remaining nodes of the set which one could become the new primary. That is done through an election, which is embedded on the details of the protocol version. How a primary gets elected, or why this a particular node becomes primary instead of another, it's out of scope for now. But keep in mind that the details of these will be related with the protocol version that your system may be having. For now, just like keep in mind that there's a failover mechanism in place. Important thing to note is that you should always have at least an odd number of nodes in your replica set. In case of even number of nodes, do make sure that the majority is consistently available. In this for no replica set, we will need to have at least three nodes to be available. The list of replica set members and their configuration options defines the replica set topology. Any topology change will trigger an election. Adding members to the set, failing members, or changing any of the replica set configuration aspects will be perceived as a topology change. The topology of a replica set is defined in the replica set configuration. The replica set configuration is defined in one of the nodes and then shared between all members through the replication mechanism. We will look into the replication configuration document in detail later. In this case, we have four members, and I need to raise your attention to a specific situation. This topology offers exactly the same number of failovers as a three-node replica set. 
we can only afford to lose one member. In case of losing two of them, we will have no majority available out of the set. Why? Well, the majority of four is three. Therefore, the two remaining nodes will not be able to be electing a primary in between them. Having that extra node will not provide extra availability of the service, just another redundant copy of our data, which is good, but not necessarily for availability reasons. Now, replica sets can go up to 50 members. And this might be useful, especially for geographical distribution of our data, where we want copies of our data closer to our users and applications, or in just multiple locations for redundancy. But only a maximum of seven of those members can be voting members. More than seven members may cause election rounds to take too much time with little to none benefit for availability and consistency purposes. So between those seven nodes, one of them will become the primary and the remaining ones will be electable as primaries if in case the topology changes or in case a new election gets triggered. Now, if for some reason we can't or don't want to have a data bearing node, but still be able to fail over between nodes, we can add a replica set member as an arbiter. That said, arbiters do cause significant consistency issues in distributed data systems. So we advise you to use them with care. In my personal view, the usage of arbiters is a very sensitive and potentially harmful option in many deployments. So I highly discourage the usage of arbiters. Within secondary nodes, these can also be sent to have specific or special properties defined. We can define hidden nodes, for example. The purpose of a hidden node is to provide specific read-only workloads or have copies of your data which are hidden from the application. Hidden nodes can also be set with a delay in their replication process. We call these delayed nodes. The purpose of having delayed nodes is to allow resilience to application level corruption without relying on cold backup files to recover from such an event. If we have a node delayed, let's say one hour, and if your DBA accidentally drops a collection, we have one hour to recover all the data from the delayed node without needing to go back to backup file to recover to whatever the time that backup was created enabling us to have hot backups. Let's recap what we just learned in this lecture. Replica sets are groups of MongoD processes that share the same data between all the members of the set. They provide a high availability and failover mechanism to our application, making the service in case of failure. The failover is supported by a majority of nodes that elect between them who should be the new primary node at each point in time. Replica sets are a dynamic system, means that members may have different roles at different times and can be set to address specific functional purpose like addressing read-only workloads or set to be delayed in time to allow hardback.